The female with lower quadrant abdominal pain can be challenging for us in the ED. There are a bunch of conditions we need to think about in females with abdominal pain, and one of these things is ovarian torsion. But what we have been taught about ovarian torsion may be wrong. I'm going to walk through a couple misconceptions we hold regarding ovarian torsion with a case I had a while back. My patient was a 9-year-old female with lower right abdominal pain for a couple days. She said the pain comes and goes, and it became more severe whenever she peed. Her mom was sure this was a UTI, and she just wanted some antibiotics. The pain at its worst was a 7 or 8 out of 10, but it would go back down to a 2 or 3. She denied fevers, but she said she had many episodes of nausea. She had no prior past medical history, including UTIs, and my abdominal exam revealed some slight lower quadrant tenderness, but no peritoneal findings. I ordered a urinalysis, thinking this was going to be fairly straightforward. Finally, her urinalysis came back, and it was normal. Well, time to start thinking through things again and go back to the drawing board. I thought to myself, what could I be missing? This doesn't seem like appendicitis, but could it be ovarian torsion? She's young and has intermittent pain, and this doesn't seem consistent with torsion. Yes, ovarian torsion is rare, affecting around 6 people for every 100,000. The classic population affected by torsion is women of reproductive age. But what we fail to realize is that up to 15% of cases with torsion occur in children. Several studies have found cases can even incur in those before the start of menses, even infancy. What about postmenopausal patients? One study found that up to 25% of cases occurred in postmenopausal patients, and other cohort studies suggest similar findings. Torsion can even occur in pregnancy. Risks for torsion during pregnancy include known ovarian masses, a history of prior torsion, prior pelvic surgery, and fertility treatments. Your first clinical takeaway is that while torsion most commonly affects those of reproductive age, keep it in mind for kids, older patients, and pregnant females with lower abdominal pain. Next, let's look at the duration and severity of pain. The classic presentation is sudden, severe pain with nausea and vomiting. Back to our patient, she has had intermittent pain for a couple days, which isn't all that severe. This can't possibly be torsion, right? Only about half of patients experience severe, sudden pain. Pain may be more subacute and comparatively mild, especially in patients with a history of prior cysts or other pelvic problems like polycystic ovarian syndrome. Symptoms can be a wide range from mild to severe pain, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal fullness. Pain may be constant or come and go with changes in activity. There have been multiple cases of patients with pain over days to weeks due to intermittent torsion. Even more of a problem, ovarian torsion can mimic other conditions like appendicitis, kidney stones, ectopic pregnancy, and colitis. While up to 70% of patients have nausea and vomiting, this leaves 30% of patients without these issues. The key takeaway from all this is that not all patients have the classic picture of ovarian torsion and may have more subacute symptoms. Next, our patient does not currently have severe pain and the abdominal exam is not impressive. But when you look at the data behind our exam, up to 30% of patients with surgically confirmed torsion have no abdominal tenderness. The problem with this is that our exam may falsely reassure us resulting in us missing torsion. There have been a lot of recent data concerning utility of pelvic exam, and I'm not going to do a deep dive. Just keep in mind that over and over again, studies show that emergency physicians and even OB docs do not agree on pelvic or bimanual exam, and our sensitivity is very poor. Your final takeaway is you cannot rely on a normal exam, whether abdominal or bimanual. Just because you don't feel a mass does not mean the patient can't have torsion. And like we talked about, pain on external abdominal exam with palpation can be relatively mild. Back to my patient, I wasn't impressed with her abdominal exam, but I talked over the differential with the mom and the patient. We elected to go forward with ultrasound. The radiologist called me with a diagnosis of ovarian torsion, and I spoke with our GYN docs, who took her to the OR. In summary, keep in mind that ovarian torsion can affect all age ranges. Also, don't rely on the classic history and exam findings to diagnose ovarian torsion.